Hey everybody, this is Brian. Welcome to the 13th C Sharp tutorial. Today we're going to be discussing functions. Well, right now you're looking at a function. Static void main. That's your main function. A function is just a block of code that gets executed. Notice these brackets here. Anything within those brackets is going to get executed when we call the main function. Now, there are different types of functions and we're going to cover them. Notice the static keyword. Static means there can be only one instance of that function. That's going to sound confusing and we're going to cover this. Void means it returns nothing. Main is the name. And then in parameters, in parameters, sorry, in brackets you have the parameters string, which is just an array of string called arguments or args. So that is our function. So go ahead and create a new class. And let's just call it cat because yes, I like cats. And in here, let's just say, uh, let's make a public string name. And then let's say public void hiss. Let's capitalize the H there. And we're just going to say console right line. So that is a function right there. We've just made one. There's the code block. Whoops. There's the code block that gets executed. Um, public access modifier. Example, just like with our variables, we can make it public or private. Public means it's available to the outside world. Private means it's internal to this class. Only this class can access it. Void, once again, means it returns nothing. We have the name and then the arguments list, and there's none, so we just have the brackets. And then the code that we're going to execute. So let's actually just create an instance of that cl cat class. Whoops. There we go. Little keyboard challenge today. It's been a long day. And then there's our hiss function. Now, you notice how you have to have the brackets behind it. That's because in C Sharp you have to have the parameter list, even if it's empty. And let's just run this. And whoops, we forgot our. Uh, handy console.read, keep the window open here. Notice the brackets behind read. That's right, read is a function. If you hover the mouse over it, it says int console read. What that means is that's returning an integer. Instead of void, it has int. So there's his. So what we're doing here, let's kind of break this down a little bit. You have a class called cat, which is our blueprint. You're creating a variable and creating a new instance of that class. In other words, we're creating an object. That object, we're calling the his function inside of that object. So when it says ccat.his, it's taking that instance out of your blueprint, going to his, and executing the code inside of it. No voodoo magic. It's actually pretty simple. So what about static? You see how it says static void main blah blah blah. Well, let's create a static function here. And once again, I'm a big fan of copying and pasting, so let's just do that. Notice how the only change in the syntax is we've got this static keyword in here. So what does static really do for us? Well, if you go back into ccat, notice how meow is not in there, even though we gave it a public access modifier. Well, why is that? The answer is pretty simple. Static simply means there will be only one. And we have to back up a little bit. If you make 100 instances of this cat class, 
each instance is going to have a his function. So in turn, you're going to have a hundred his functions in memory. Static means there'll be only one meow function. Because there's only one, you don't even need an instance of this cat class because it's created automatically. To prove that, you can just say cat meow. Notice how meow's in there, but his isn't. It's because meow's static. Very simple, very easy. So let's run this and you'll see both of them fire off. Hiss and meow. So there we have hiss coming from our object and meow coming from the static function which is not even an object. We're just calling it directly out of the class. So that in a nutshell is how you do a function. Now let's do a function that returns something. So let's say uh, public int, we'll say age equals zero, because you always want to give it a default default value. Um, .NET will default it to zero just for you, but it's always safe to do it. And then we're going to say public int get age. We're going to say return age. So all we're doing here is we're saying, okay, we have a function. It's got a public access modifier. Its return type is an int. Notice how we've been doing void, meaning it returns nothing. Now we're going to return an int, and you can return any type. This could be a string, it could be an int, it could be the actual cat class itself or another class. And then get age is the name, and then we have some arguments. And we're just returning the age. So let's just do this. And let's say uh, console dot write line see cat get age and let's actually set the age of this cat let's say cat equals and Ophelia my other kitty is 18 years old wow old cat oops forgot the age part she gets memory goes when she gets old so let's run this and there's our 18 so what we're saying is console write line c cat dot get age notice the brackets or yeah the parentheses and it's in parentheses too so what we're really doing here is we're calling two functions we're saying write line because write line's a function notice it says void console write line meaning write line returns nothing its parameter list is an int value and there's 18 overloads that's something we're going to get into in the next topic but for right now just understand that when you call console write line you're calling a class the static method, write line, and then your arguments are ccat.getH, so you're calling another function. Now let's make one, let's call this set name. Let's actually call it set age, sorry. And we're just going to say age equals I age. And let's not call it I age, let's call it N age, sorry. Now, notice how we forgot the void, so it's barking at us. Say method must have a return type. Well, we don't want to return anything, so it's going to be a void. This is what in Java you would call a getter and a setter. Now, .NET handles it differently. They have a get and a set method, which we'll discuss soon, very soon, in another tutorial. But let's just stick with this because it's very simple for you to understand. You have a value, or I should say a variable of age. Its initial value is zero. You're saying get age returns the age. Set age, and there's n age. We're saying age equals n age. So we have a get and a set. So let's just do you guessed it, set age, and let's say 18. So we're calling the object's set age function. We're giving it the 18. And we're going to say console.writeline ccat.getAge. And it still says 18. Now, what if you wanted multiple parameters here? Well, let's just kind of copy this. Hmm. 
And let's do something a little funky. Let's just call it funky. And we're going to say int times and string action. And then we're just going to say console, whoops, right line, and we're just going to say action. And don't get confused by this plus sign. Um, we're just making a string and we're concatenating it. So we're just saying action plus space plus time. We're not actually doing any math here. We're just making a string and we're saying add this to this to that. So we're just making a big string. And I used funky just because, well, I ran out of ideas. So we'll say, whoops, ccat, let's call it funky. And notice how there's int time and string action. So those are two parameters. Now, let me show you a little bit about um, C Sharp's self documenting methods. Let's say we want to hand this class off to another person. Well, what does int time and string action really do? What you can do is just, you know, the double slashes for a comment. Do three slashes. You notice how it puts this code in here. It says, Summary, well that's XML documentation. Param name time param name action. Well what is this? This is how you document your code. It's very simple. Give it a description. Let's get funky. And give it a description for that specific parameter. And let's say action to perform. And let's actually just fill this out while we're here. And we're going to say for int i equals 0, i is less than time i plus plus, because we're going to increment i. This is our for loop that we've done. And we're just going to put the i here. And let's go. So however many times you tell it to do it, it's going to just do a for loop. So funky. And you notice how it says, uh, let's get funky right here, because that's our description. Now we got to get rid of time. And let's just say 8. And you notice under here it says action, the action to perform. You filled that in. See if we hit that, remove it, it says time, the number of times to perform. So it's very simple, very easy, right on the screen. You can see exactly what this is going to do. And we'll just say uh, jump. We want our cat to jump because the cat's getting a little weird, had too much catnip. Help if I spell jump right. Maybe I've had too much catnip. All right. And there you see, jump 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Actually, just 7, because we said 8. So it starts 0 based, remember. So let's review really quick. I know we've kind of covered a lot of ground here. We're talking about functions. Functions have an access modifier, in this case, public. Void hiss. Void means nothing. Hiss is the name. No parameters. There's our code block right here. Then we talked about static. Static means there's only one, so you don't need an instance of your object. You call it just by calling the class name, cat meow. And then we talked about how you can return a value from your function, simply by giving it a type instead of a void. And then we talked about how you can have parameters. And we've also talked about self-documenting code, all this gobbledygook, and then how to have multiple parameters and how to do a little more advanced stuff inside of our function. There's our for loop, which we've covered in previous tutorials. And yes, the static void main, that, you guessed it, is just a function. Pretty simple, pretty easy, but you can see it's actually very powerful. You can do a lot of things with these. So this is Brian. That's all for this tutorial. I hope you found this educational and entertaining. And uh, give me a shout. Let me know if you guys got any feedback. We're going to start... Uh, stepping through these C-sharp tutorials rather quickly because I believe it's a very powerful yet easy language to learn.